Hey guys, welcome to my video today. Thanks for watching, and just to let you know, I'm reading from a script that's directly below the camera, so if I keep looking down, that's why. I'm also gonna be splitting this video up into two different recording times because I'm running out of time right now today, and I'm probably gonna finish this tomorrow, so I might be wearing something different or just be different lighting or something for a portion of the video, but it's all gonna be the same information. So before I start, I wanna let you know that this video uses both Photoshop and Illustrator by Adobe. So if you don't use these tools, you might wanna search for videos that specifically work in the platform that you are using for vector, raster art, and both. If you do work in Adobe, Illustrator, and Photoshop, then let's get going. Today's video is all about how to have a result of good vector black line art if you do not enjoy drawing in Illustrator, but you want the result of good clean vector artwork to use for a multitude of applications. I prefer to draw in Photoshop because it feels more natural to me. However, having raster art as the result of all my hard work leaves something to be desired, right? Because it leaves out a lot of possibilities for how I can apply the art in any kind of use. Not only that, but the smooth quality that vector artwork lends to your artwork is actually, in my opinion, better for coloring page interior art. The vector process helps to smooth out the lines a little bit and if you're lucky and if you have a good recipe then you don't lose too much of that natural line work feeling but it also is able to give you that smooth feeling. In my opinion vector artwork for coloring book art just prints better on the paper even if the finished file that you are delivering to the printer is going to be a PNG create space which is the platform I use to self-publish my own coloring books uses high res PNGs which is kind of weird but it works good in the end that's what they accept and so that is what I deliver even though the two are not the same thing. So I'll also show you how I save those out. I have another video which shows you how to compile multiple pages into one PDF using Adobe Acrobat, and I will link that video for you below. As you watch this video, please keep in mind that there are many, many ways that you can get great black line art results, and there's probably a different way to do it for every person that's watching this video. And it's really a matter of coming up with a recipe that works best for you. And so today, I'm just gonna show you a few of my personal formulas for doing that. So with that said, let's get going. So the first thing we're gonna start with is just creating your own brush in Photoshop. I like to create a brush with a nice crisp edge to it, something that's gonna vectorize really well and really cleanly. You don't have to create your own brush. I'm just gonna show you how to do it in case you want to because it's nice to have that customization and we all work a little bit differently. You can choose an existing brush, or you can even alter a brush, and I'll show you how to do that too. To create your own brush, you just click on this little icon at the top of your toolbar here, and it has a little folder, and it has some brushes in it. So you see it just pops up, and then you have your brush presets. So you can just test out on a blank layer what the brush is gonna look like. You can check on and off these little shape boxes. If you want, you can just look down below here and you can see the difference in how the brush is going to look without even drawing. But I like to draw because see scattering looks like that and then you could turn off the scattering and it's smooth. Sometimes it gives you like the perfect vibe if you want to do both, just like a little scattering. But anyway, you choose. So this is a good brush. I like it. So now I'm going to go to this little line box here on the upper right. I'm going to click and write new brush preset and I'm just going to name it my coloring brush my coloring line art brush capture brush size in preset so it's set at 20 point size brush i can mess with that later if i want if i just click on the brush now and i see it's down here and if i wanted to look at the list i could see that my brush I could see that my brush is down here, my coloring line art brush is right here, and if I want, I can change the size to whatever size I want. So that's six point, and I had it set at 20 point, but I can just change that up. I can change the circumference size of, of to my will. 
So if you wanted to alter an existing brush, here's how you do that. You go into your list of brushes and let's choose this brush here, Cats at Work, and I'm gonna adapt this brush. You can see down the bottom here, I can actually see a line of what that brush lo looks like already. And I can test it out on my page and see what I like. And then I can just create new brush presets. So this can be alternate coloring brush. And now I have a new brush that I made from an existing brush. So it's that easy. So next we're gonna have a way that you can just create outlines as you draw. And I love this. It's a super easy thing to do, but it's very, very effective. So I have this page, this coloring page that I want to draw. I want my letters to be outlined and I want to be able to do that easily without having to outline every letter or easier, I should say, and kind of cleaner. Because while you're doing this, you have to think about how it's going to translate into vector. And the more you do this, the more you'll get a feel for what you're going to end up with once you vectorize the art and also the changes you can make in Illustrator with the image trace that also plays into it but I don't want to get ahead. First what we're going to do is make this layer so that I can create outlines of these letters in a way that's a little less time consuming and maybe a little more clean than if I drew them myself. So of course you're giving up some creativity here because you're not going to be like drawing the perfect lines all around your letters but ultimately you're going to have more control and it's going to be quicker process. And I've done both ways a lot. And I think this way is great. Readability is really important and spacing your letters is important. And this kind of gives you a little bit more control in terms of that. In the styles menu here, I'm just gonna hit stroke. As we see, I'm on nine pixel for the line. You can position that stroke in the center, inside or outside. I'm positioning it outside and now I'm going to say okay. On my layer here I'm going to go up to fill and I'm going to make it zero. I can now use my fancy little brush here. I'm going to use my coloring line art brush because I like the cleanness of that one and I'm going to make my brush smaller than 20. I'm going to make it 11. And now I can just I can just use this line sketch art that I'm starting out with as my guide and I'm just going to do my letters this way. So if I don't like what I have to start out with here and I want to redraw this, if I don't want to have to go through all that again, creating the stroke style and all that, I can just command A to select everything and then command X and delete everything that was in that layer and I can just start again. So. Now I can just do my whole new sketch here. So now what I can do is grab my lasso tool and I can just sort of move my letters around, resize them, remove them, tinker with them, make them exactly like how I want them to be with the background art. So that's what I'm going to do. And then once I'm done with this artwork, I can just go in. Doing this makes it so easy to just fill out your line. There are two things you want to watch out for is number one, that the brush that you're using is small enough that you have control over the edge. You just got to watch the edges. The point size of this brush is 20 right now. I'm going to change it to like nine. And then you can see I have like more control over the edge of the line. And the edge of the line is really what we want to worry about because that's what's going to get vectorized. And we want it to be as smooth and clean as possible. And zooming in is important too, working at at least 50%. 66.7 is even better. So as you can see, this is just sort of giving me more control over my letters and over the space of my letters in this whole image, like how they're spaced out, sort of gives me a better sense of what to expect. It sort of gives me better control of like how the black line outline behaves and it provides like a preview for me of how I need to space my letters out in order to make this, you know, readable and colorable. So I'm just going to fill in my letters and design my letters and then I'm going to come back and we can then bring this in to Illustrator.
Okay, so now we have our final coloring page line art. It's all done. As you can see, I changed it up a little bit and I did something a little different with the lettering. We're going to bring this into Illustrator and then we're going to vectorize this art. So we're going to go on to our layer with the lettering. We did the stroke style to this. So we're going to double click on it. And as you can see, we have the stroke on the letters like we did before. Earlier in the video, we did the stroke, and here is where you can actually change the thickness of the letters if you want. So this is really cool because now I can say, okay, my, my final background art is done, and now I can sort of decide, do I wanna make my letters stronger? Do I wanna make the line thinner? Like, what's working best with my artwork here? And actually, I'm thinking this, maybe I'll do 12 looks good and then you can also really see how the placement of the stroke can change how you make your artwork and you can just see that here so let's keep it on outside which I find outside to be the most um, <clears throat> easy to control um I think I think I might make the letters 11 pixels because I like them to stand out a little bit more than the background art, but I also want to give the colorer plenty to color. So this actually might this actually might be better. Let's see. So in order to bring it into Illustrator, as it is with the outline, we need to rasterize the layer style. So I'm going to show you what's going to happen if I don't rasterize the layer style and I bring it into Illustrator. I'm going to select all, copy, and now we're going to go into Illustrator and we're going to paste it and you see there's absolutely no stroke. It's just the original artwork that we had on zero fill in Photoshop. So at this point you might be wondering why not just make the outline in Illustrator with this artwork that I've just brought in from Photoshop. The reason I don't do that is because I can't see what the outline is going to look like ahead of time if I wait until I get into Illustrator in order to create the stroke. And I much prefer to make those design decisions with spacing and with letter thickness and all that stuff while I'm still in Photoshop. I'm going to delete this. So I'm going back into Photoshop and I saved a copy of this layer. I'm actually going to make a copy of this layer and I'm going to turn off the original and I'm going to make the fill zero again. And now I'm going to, on this layer, I'm going to rasterize layer style. So now my outline is part of the image and there's absolutely no fill. So now I'm gonna duplicate my background here. And now I'm going to merge the lettering layer that has been rasterized and the layer of the background to put this art together. So it's one layer. I'm gonna do Command E to do that. So now I have one transparent layer of my black line art and I'm gonna do Command A, Command C, and now I'm going to bring it into Illustrator. At this point you're in Illustrator and I would highly recommend that you already have your file open and you're going to want to make a new layer. So you hit the little Create New Layer because if you paste it without making a new layer it's going to try and paste into an existing layer and you don't want that. So as you can see when we put it on the part of the background that's not your actual artboard it's transparent. Now we're going to go and open our image trace. We're going to open our image trace window here and this is where all the magic is going to happen. Preset I leave on default. You can mess with all of these settings if you like and as long as you have this little preview box checked then you'll be able to see what the actual art will look like. And that's really good because you're able to adjust settings to suit both your thick and thin lines in your artwork. So I have my mode on black and white, which is exactly what I want. I want to view the tracing results, so that is correct. And right now I have preset on default, which I find works great for my coloring page art. I also like to click ignore white, because if you don't,
click ignore white, the entire image is going to have a white background and you'll have to go through all of your little nooks and crannies and delete the white. And that's a pain. So now I'm gonna hit preview and now we'll be able to adjust. So I find that adjusting threshold makes a big difference. If I use less threshold, I get less black line. If I use more, I get more black line. My goal is to not lose any of my lines, like look at the butterfly right now, but also to have thinner lines and thicker lines. And I also don't want my thick lines to be too thick. So I just adjust this way for a little while. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I find this way to hit the most of my pain points in one go, instead of doing different things separately and then putting things together, which is a lot more time consuming. This works out well. So really what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at some of the thinner lines and I'm seeing if those are staying whole. Some of the thinner lines that are closed. So this appears to be maybe the best. So I'm gonna keep 75 in my mind and just uh, scoot it down a little bit. So you can adjust as much as you wish. And then you can also change up some of the other levels here and see if anything makes any changes for you that are going to help to optimize your artwork. Okay, so I've reached a point where I think this looks pretty good. And now I'm going to unpreview it and I'm gonna hit the trace button. So that just traced it for me, but there's one other step before I have the vector artwork so that I can use it. So I'm going to object expand. It's going to have check boxes here. Object and fill are always checked. And so I don't mess with any of the grayed out ones because they're not an option, but I don't need to. So I say, okay. And now as you can see, I have transparent line art right here. I'm gonna show you how you can export your PNG out of Illustrator, but if you're gonna do it this way and export out of Illustrator, I would caution you to, number one, make sure that you have the color space of your file to be correct to your end printer. So in this case, I'm using CreateSpace, they use RGB. I would make sure that I have my color setting at RGB. And I would also want to make sure that all of my work here is totally 100% black. And I would also want to make sure that this file that I have set up in Illustrator is set up to the page that I'm going to be, to the actual size of the page that I'm printing my book in, in CreateSpace, so I have all of my guidelines set correctly. I don't save my PNGs typically out of Illustrator, so I don't have this file set up with perfect guides or anything, but if you decide to do it that, then I would suggest that you make sure that all your guides are correct. But if you do do that, then I will show you how to do it. So you go to File, Export, Export As, and then there's PNG down here. And now you can just say export and it's going to say, it's going to give you this box that says resolution. So you do want it 300. Art optimized, yes. It doesn't have to be interlaced. Background, transparent, yes. So you can say okay. So that is one way to export your PNG. But I always bring it back into Photoshop. So I'm going to select all, copy, and now we're gonna go back into Photoshop. And I'm going to paste it into my file as a smart object. Now it's a vector smart object. The reason I like to save the PNG out in Photoshop is number one, I'm just more comfortable in Photoshop. I'm able to fix any problems quicker if anything should arise. So I like to double click on my layer and I like to make sure that this is 100% black. So that's what I do because sometimes when you bring, when you're moving around files from Illustrator to Photoshop and vice versa, the colors can change. So that's one way that I control and make sure that it's actually black. And then I duplicate the layer often because I want those really tiny little lines to still show up. And then the last step is I turn off my opaque white background. I leave it on until I'm completely done with the black line art because I wanna be able to see what I'm doing. We gotta make sure that our artwork is set up properly with our guidelines. So I wanna make sure with all my guides around my page that nothing is going over the edge and then it's spaced 
correctly. Okay, there it is right now. So now I'm going to turn off my white background, save as, and I'm going to go to PNG, no layers. That's the page. And now I'm going to save that. I already have this file in Photoshop set up to create spaces, color space, so I didn't have to worry about switching that. I just always, with Create Space coloring books, and maybe there's a different trick that other people use, but what I like to do is, when I have my final art, always do color overlay and make sure that it's black because I've had issues with that with PNGs that I've saved out of Photoshop that I did not do this step to. That's what I do because it gives me the assurance that I'm gonna get the blackest line possible. So that's it. And that is how I like to save the PNG. That's how I like to save my black line artwork. And that's how I vectorize my raster black line work. And there you go. I hope this video helped you guys. I hope that it helps you with your coloring books or your black line art in any books that you decide to make with CreateSpace. This has been optimized for CreateSpace because that is what I have personally troubleshooted a lot myself. So these are just the things that I have done to try and get my lines as black as possible, my lines as smooth as possible, while still keeping the unique character of my own particular aesthetic. I'll leave links to other videos that may be relevant to you down below because I've done a couple of them. So I hope this has helped you. I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.